Good morning. It's Tuesday, April the 6th, Easter Tuesday, the Tuesday after Easter. Uh, we're here at the Rectory of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer according to the 1928 prayer book. And we'll wait a moment or two until some of our online prayer partners uh, come online. And there they're getting started. Um, our service begins on page 6 in the 1928 Book of Common Prayer. From uh, the first epistle general of St. John, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship, and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, and to whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Uh, we'll read the Psalms this morning for the sixth day of the month at morning prayer on page 374, Psalms 30 and 31. Uh, Psalm 30, a thanksgiving for deliverance from death, very appropriate to the resurrection season. And Psalm 31 takes us back to the passion in which Christ won the victory. Uh, and it's a prayer uh, in which the psalmist takes refuge in God with uh, joyful recollection of past mercies and confident hopes of future deliverance. 
I will magnify thee, O Lord, for thou hast set me up, and not made my foes to triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Thou, Lord, hast brought my soul out of hell. Thou hast kept my life, that I should not go down into the pit. Sing praises unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks unto him for a remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endureth but the twinkling of an eye, and in his pleasure is life. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity I said, I shall never be removed. Thou, Lord, of thy goodness, hast made my hill so strong. If thou didst turn thy face from me, and I was troubled. Then cried I unto thee, O Lord, and gat me to my Lord right humbly. What profit is there in my blood when I go down into the pit? Shall the dust give thanks unto thee, or shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned my heaviness into joy. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Therefore shall every good man sing of thy praise without ceasing. O my God, I will give thanks unto thee for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In thee, O Lord, have I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me, make haste to deliver me, and be thou my strong rock and house of defense, that thou mayest save me. For thou art my strong rock and my castle, be thou also my guide, and lead me for thy name's sake. Draw me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. Into thy hands I commend my spirit, for thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. I have hated them that hold of lying vanities, and my trust hath been in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble, and hast known my soul in adversities. Thou hast not shut me up into the hand of the enemy, but hast set my feet in a large room. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble, and mine eyes consumed for very heaviness, yea, my soul and my body. For my life is waxen old with heaviness, and my years with mourning. My strength faileth me because of mine iniquity, and my bones are consumed. I became a reproach among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors. And they of mine acquaintance were afraid of me, and they that did see me without conveyed themselves from me. I am clean forgotten, as a dead man out of mine. I am become like a broken vessel. For I have heard the blasphemy of the multitude, and fears on every side, whilst they conspire together against me, and take their counsel to take away my life. But my hope hath been in thee, O Lord. I have said, Thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies, and from them that persecute me. Show thy servant the light of thy countenance, and save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be confounded, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the ungodly be put to confusion, and be put to silence in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which cruelly, disdainfully, and despitefully speak against the righteous. Oh, how plentiful is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, and that thou hast prepared for them that put their trust in thee, even before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the covert of thine own presence from the plottings of men. Thou shalt keep them secretly in thy tabernacle from the strife of tongues. Thanks be to the Lord, for he has showed me marvelous great kindness in a strong city. But in my haste I said, I am cast out of the sight of thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my prayer, and I cried unto thee. O love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth them that are faithful, and plenteously rewardeth the proud doer. Be strong, and he shall establish your heart, all ye that put your trust in the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 25th uh, chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah, and uh, through Easter week, the lessons... Uh, 
um, are chosen to um, reflect different aspects of the resurrection theme. And today we have uh, the prophet's testimony to uh, the deliverance of uh, the poor and oppressed underdog from ruthless and more powerful nations. He's speaking, of course, of the faithful in Israel. And then um, in a wonderful turnaround, uh, the banquet of the kingdom to which all nations take part, but now not as enemies, but rather as uh, converted believers. And uh, ends with a note on the um, uh, uh, overcoming of death, death, what St. Paul calls the last enemy. O Lord, my God, O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For thou hast made of a city a heap, of a defense city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city. It shall never be built. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee, the city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines and the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines and the lees well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory and the Lord our God shall wipe away tears from off all faces and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Here endeth the first lesson. On page 10, the Te Deum, we praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee the Father of an infinite majesty, the adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. For our second lesson, we're going to continue the reading of Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 13 that we started yesterday. So yesterday, Luke's gospel gives an account confirming really all the details we found in Matthew and Mark about the women early to the tomb, uh, the emptiness of the tomb, the stone rolled away, and a message, of course, saying that he was risen. And yet, as Luke indicated, this was not quite enough. When the women come back to the disciples, uh, they, their reports are met with disbelief and perplexity. So it's going to take more than an empty tomb 
and the good news of the angel to bring the disciples out of perplexity into understanding, out of uh, doubt and disbelief into the assurance of faith in the resurrection, and of course, out of sorrow into joy. It's going to take Jesus himself. And that's precisely what uh, is unfolded to us wonderfully in the remaining part of this chapter, beginning at verse 13. And behold, two of the disciples went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another, as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them, his name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And, beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh into the village whither they went. And he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, as saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, and blessed it, and brake, and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us, while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour, and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit, a ghost. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy, and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of an honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and ye are witnesses of these things. 
here endeth the second lesson. Well, it's very clear that the full assurance of faith requires a clarity of understanding about the saving purpose of God in history to which the scriptures, Moses and the prophets, bear testimony. And it is only as we uh, recognize God's plan of salvation that we're going to be able to recognize and know uh, the person in whom that salvation is accomplished. For the disciples, it's very difficult. They, the idea of a suffering Messiah doesn't make sense to them. You know, a savior, how can it be a savior if he's suffering, you know, uh, himself and as it were in need of salvation? Um, but the scriptures make clear that it is precisely by taking upon himself the full burden of our suffering that the Messiah indeed uh, delivers us through it and from it. Uh, we give thanks and praise uh, to our Messiah Jesus, uh, who has opened the eyes of our minds uh, in the assurance of faith and understanding of the uh, purpose and will of God. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. We commend ourselves. Uh, in, the, in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one God and Father of us all, we commend ourselves and one another and the whole church and people of God to his watchful and loving care. Bid your praise for our country, its peace, order, and good government, for our churches and the faithfulness of their wish, worship and witness, for those who suffer in mind, body, or estate. And we call to mind particularly those for whom we've been asked to pray. And we also remember those who have departed this life in the faith of Christ and are now at rest, that we with them may rise to glory. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. 
O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, who through thine only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, hast overcome death, and opened unto us the gate of everlasting light. We humbly beseech thee, that as by thy special grace preventing us, thou dost put into our minds good desires, so by thy continual help we may bring the same to good effect. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In this season of resurrection, we give thanks indeed for our own deliverance from condemnation into, from wrath uh, into the favor and grace of God, uh, through Christ who has borne our sins for us, in whom we have the forgiveness of sins um, uh, through his blood. Um, we give thanks in the words of the general thanksgiving on page 19. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thy unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to our salvation. Pardon me, a little momentary glitch there. To us and to all men, we bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. I leave you this day with a lovely verse from Isaiah the conclusion of his testimony to the great deliverance of God and his victory over death. The, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace.